Welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast with Mike Kincaid and Jake Goebel. Join them as they experience specialty coffee and document their journey. These friends explore roasts and roasting methods, brewing equipment and techniques, and review the cafes they visit along the way. Thanks, Brownie, and thank you for joining us for episode 118 of the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast. Mike and I talk a little bit about some of the Starbucks that we ended up drinking at a bank function, uh, some brew tips for you, and then also give you a little bit of update on what we've got going on and what is proper office etiquette with regards to the coffee mug. That's a question that we try to answer for you. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Hi, welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast. This is episode 118. I am Jake Goble. With me, as always, is my partner in coffee crime, the Mike Kincaid. And when I say coffee crime, I mean coffee delightedness, deliciousness, coffee servishness. Coffee so good, it Co- should be illegal. <clears throat> Is that where you're going? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I'm here that for is, you. That's great. That's Don't worry. awesome. That is so good. Yeah. That is so, you're so, You're like in the deep so end good. there. Yeah. Floundering. Well, we've got Floundering. Um, a coffee podcast. Of course, you're listening to that right now, but um, you may not know, but I'm going to tell you now, we also have a YouTube channel where you can watch us talk about coffee, which apparently, I guess, is uh, people do, and I'm not, I'm not judging you for doing that. I mean, we put the video out there, so thank you for watching. It just... You know, I don't watch a lot of videos, so I find it hard to come alongside you with that. Uh, but Mike does. You don't watch it. I don't watch it. It's like, do you ever? You don't. But a lot no. of people, you know, right, it's, it, they would put like the news in the background. They do their work and yeah. then they're like, tune in. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, I want to see, see this part. Saying. Sometimes people put it on like where they're working. Oh, okay. They just the have the video. Noise? Yeah. And then they see you say something stupid and they're like, wait, what did you just say? And then they back it up and they, they watch see. that 30 seconds. Then they go about their business. I gotcha. I gotcha. Well, at least in my mind, that's what they do. If you tune in here for 30 seconds, <laughs> you will see on the table in front of us, we've got some um, coffee from Tim Wendelbow. And we this is a teasing the brew and review that is going to come out on Friday. So in the, in, at the end of the week, kind of in a few days here from when you're listening to this. Big thanks to John Landstrom for uh, from Sweden. He's a listener in Sweden, and he sent us a three month subscription what? to Tim Wendelbo Coffee. Just blown away That's by so your cool. your generosity and your kindness to us. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, That's awesome. Incredible. Thank you so much. And the coffee's been incredible. Uh, but Mike and I are not drinking that coffee at the moment. Right now, we well, are drinking shots of espresso. We are drinking what Mike has been. Roasting. This is the Honduras. This is the Hondo on espresso. Um, that Mike, you you roasted that. Don't, so don't turn your nose up at it. That's you, baby. That's you. Well, after drinking Tim, it's like that is the King Cup. What are we doing? Uh, here? That is on espresso, and that is one of our offerings. We kind of got categories. We prefer the King Cup, kind of neat or pure or straight or black, whatever you want to call it, without cream and sugar, because we feel like. The cream and sugar could compete with some of the flavors, the natural coffee flavors that the roasting has brought out. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the case with the Honto and with the um, Kenyan, right? We have a Kenyan right now Mm -hmm. on King Cup. We also have a a Saguaro offering. And we've got a Guatemalan and a Colombian. And those we recommend if you like cream and sugar, flavored creamers, whatever it is that, you know, you don't want to drink it straight, neat. We prefer the term neat. So if you don't want to drink it neat, these stand up better to cream and sugar, but they're also excellent neat. So, yeah. I mean, they're, you've been it's getting more some crazy well flavors rounded, out of the Colombian. Yeah, more well-rounded um, coffee that there is more go. suited. And there you go. typically the Suara would be better for espresso. I'm not saying yeah. that there isn't. Uh, the King Cup, I think the Honduras is great for espresso. I've been killing it. I wouldn't probably recommend the Kenyan, but you probably could. Probably not. I mean, I have. It would be a little too acidic, I think. I've um, done it. But well, sure, you, there's nothing you don't do. Yeah, there's nothing Ain't I nothing don't do don't on espresso. Do. Yeah, but so those are kind of the two categories that we currently have. Uh, the other category that we are working on, actually, there's two more categories that we're working on. Two. One of which is a naturally processed coffee category that we are going to call the chain fruit. Uh, named after the chain fruit chola, chain fruit chola, which is a cactus native to Arizona, just like the king cup and just like the I like saying it. chain fruit, chola. chain fruit. Chola. So we're gonna have the chain fruit. There is a naturally processed Ethiopian that is a strawberry slap you upside the face. 
or a slap you upside the head, a slap you strawberry flavor that Mike Berry. is dialing in at the moment. And we're going to get that up on the website for you. There's a, a couple samples been sent out to some of you. And um, everybody else is just going to have to wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that's that's kind of where it's at. We're, we're rocking that natty. So this one is a slap you strawberry, not a blueberries to the face. But still, it's a very good coffee, and it's we're very excited berry. about it coming out. Yes, a very, very berry coffee. Berry. There's times I think berry, berry. maybe blueberry. No. But then times I think maybe it's strawberry. strawberry. It's strawberry. It's a strawberry. And then... It's not a blueberry. It's not like a blueberry muffin. Yeah. But it's, it's like, a strawberry. You think it's a strawberry? Oh, it's a very berry strawberry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Is I'm it? very happy to see you. It's like watching strawberry shortcake... Uh, when they go to Ice Cream Island with the little pony. Remember the pony? Where yeah. They were doing the little pony parade yeah, on they, Ice Cream Island. Then, That's what kind of strawberry it uh, is. I it's a you. slap you straight upside the face. It's strawberry. Good. Slap you. What I liked most about it yeah. was how creamy it was. Just so intensely. Are we still like talking about Ice Cream creamy. Island or are we talking about the coffee again? Uh, I was never talking about that. You were. I was just listening. Oh, gotcha. Because uh, that was a little awkward. But awkward. the coffee, it's just so creamy, yeah. savory, just yeah. very juicy. Um, well, savory is different than sweet. Isn't that the opposite of sweet? Savory? I, didn't, I didn't say sweet. You said savory. Yeah. That's juicy and savory. I think savory. Creamy, is savory. Savory? Yeah, savory. Is it? Yeah. I it's think so. savory. Like you say that savory with like to vegetables. Me is, it's like it lingers. Like sweet or savory. A savory flavor, something that like lingers and you taste it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, savory is belonging to the category that is salty or spicy rather than sweet. Yeah, that's not how I'm using it. Yeah. I, yes, I know. But you're confusing people. Or morally wholesome or acceptable is also a... That's how I'm using it. No, you're not using it as morally wholesome, wholesome. or acceptable. It's like a whole... Honorable, proper, seemly, respectable. Yeah. That's it's the wrong not, word then. Yeah, it's the wrong it's word. the wrong word. That's where I'm going. What would you say, like when people say that's such a savory steak, I think it's like it's a juicy steak that leaves a, a nice um, they're lasting talking. They're saying flavor. the opposite of sweet. Kind of the, the definition that I just read. It doesn't make sense. It makes they, a lot of sense. Yeah. They use it wrong. You no, I use it wrong. You could say that there's a lingering juicy. I think that's a that's, creamy. That is a great coffee. I like word, creamy. The lingering juicy. <laughs> the lingering juicy. It has an just exceptional body. mouth mouth feel. Mouse yeah. feel. <laughs> yeah. Savory with a mouse. A little so, fish. Little. Then uh the other category that we're working on, uh, we don't have a name for it yet, I don't believe, or I do have a name. Well, we haven't discussed it because I've contemplated not creating a category for it. No, I'm creating a category for it. Because it, I think it would fit, depending on the coffee, into potentially the king or the swirl. Oh, I see. I see. I think it should have its own because it's a there's a cool cactus out there. Oh, yeah. I think I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. And I'm trying to find it. So oh, stall okay. for what me you? real quick. Yeah. So um, the last category in our mind oh, is a decaf. Yeah. Yeah. Decaf. Something to have late at night. Something for those people that maybe are caffeine sensitive. Um, you know. And the night bloom. There you go. That's what I was thinking. Night bloom. So even though and it could fit. Blue bottle. It's a sweet category name. It's a sweet category name. Blue bottle separates theirs and they call it something special as well. Blue bottle does. Blue bottle after yeah, blue dark. Blue bottle. Blue bottle after dark. Yeah, so we have to. Empty orange bottle. Orange cactus after dark. Mm. Welcome to the night bloom. Welcome to the night bloom. So, yeah. That's a cool I, name. I'm not a fan of decaf coffee. Uh, every once in a while, I kind of want some coffee late at night, but I am morally opposed to decaf because, you know, it's not good. It's the opposite of coffee. It is fake coffee. Like fake news, it's fake coffee. That's oh, what is decaf it? is. And yeah, uh, so going. Mike dropped this bag of decaf on me, a little sample, and he said, why don't you try this? And I said, fine, I'll do it for you and I'll do it right now. He, I mean, he brought it yeah, over. That's exactly how it went. I brewed it up and I was blown away by it. Absolutely blown away by a salt water processed decaf. Swiss. Swiss water processed. Hold on, let me run. Absolutely blown away by a Swiss water processed decaf. <laughs> so Salt water? So, I have no idea. It was so it's, savory. It's the, <laughs> 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 it was kind of spicy yeah. instead of sweet. So Swiss water, SWP. I suppose as a... Swiss water process. I like SWV. 
Sisters, Sisters with Voices. It was a great oh. band, uh, was R&B it? band group. You can call it whatever you want. You call it the Night Bloom. I call it the Night Bloom. So I drank this decaf and I was blown away. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. And tasting that coffee, yep, just quit playing with stuff, Mike. I like the spring. Quit playing with the spring. You were supposed to put it back on the thingity thing. You are supposed to give me so a Phillips. Mike, Mike broke something, and now he's playing with the leftover remains of it. But anyhow, this decaf, where was it from? From Genuine Origin. Genuine but origin. What, what country? What origin? Honduras. From Honduras. It was an exceptionally awesome coffee that made me a believer in decafs. Uh, those of you who are staunch anti-decafs, um, forgive me for betraying your trust and forgive my disloyalty to you and to the cause, resist, but I got to get my gains with mm-hmm. the decaf coffee. It was absolutely incredible, and I want more, and I mean, I would drink it just because it tastes delicious, yeah. and I'm encouraging Mike to 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 pursue that a little bit more so we can have a decaf offering. I think it'd be cool. I agree with you for many reasons. Now, the some people just can't have that much caffeine, but they enjoy coffee, especially specialty coffee, well-roasted coffee. Other people restrict their caffeine because maybe they're pregnant or maybe there's other some, maybe there's other some uh, medical condition that they can only take so much. Um, I had a coworker that um, had that very same thing. The doctor said you can have one cup and sometimes she wanted something in the evening with dessert, but if it wasn't decaf. So I think to us though, to me, Decaf is very challenging to find a good decaf. And I would venture to say that's why a lot of people that get into specialty coffee dislike it because it, it, it's almost akin to just going back to the store-bought grocery store over-roasted uh, coffee. It's very hard to find, in, in my opinion, yeah. a decaf that's done well. well. And I think that's really, it, once you taste it, um, Angel's Cup a while back when I was a, a member of it, They threw a decaf. What they have is they have a sampler, right? They send you Mm -hmm. four coffees. You can do a flight, um, which are like, excuse me, three ounces, I think, a bag or something like that. Or you can do a pack or the the bigger ones where they send you like six ounce bags. The black box one? Yeah, the black box. I forget which one it was. They did something new and they thought it would be fun and it was received with mixed uh, feedback. They snuck in a decaf. They didn't tell anybody because they thought it was so exceptional. And I would agree. I still remember to this day, I was blown away by how good it was. And you flip over the card and you look at it and you go, what? That's a decaf. That was pretty sweet. Well, some people were saying, hey, I use this as my morning cup and I had a headache all day long, Angel's Cup. Because of you. Because you didn't tell me, you know, like that was the kind of feedback they were getting. Because you tricked me. You deceived me. Yeah, exactly. Here's my opinion about it. Okay, what's your opinion? You're going to give it? You never give your opinion. Decaf is blasphemous, but maybe I'm jaded when really all I want to get is highly caffeinated. There you go. When I drank that decaf, What's your goal? The, the kids called me out. They called me out. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They, they said, said you, you hypocrite. Can't. Yeah, they said you hypocrite. You hippo. You made a rap song about being highly caffeinated. And Aubrey, she looked at me. She said, "I thought decaf was blasphemous." Mm. Mm-hmm. Be careful what you say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that what she did? She did the mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. Everything I, I see thought you. about you was wrong. I see you over there drinking decaf. Dad, I ain't ever going to listen to you again. Nope. Nope. Betray my trust once, and it's over. So I find de- roasting a decaf to be challenging for many reasons. The process which it goes through kind of degrades the cellular, the cell wall structure of the bean. And so it roasts a little quicker. And it also has like a dark, uh, the green beans take on a, a darker shade. And throughout the roasting process, they appear to be farther along than they really are. They look mm. darker. And they even when you. you're done... So they deceive you when you're drinking and they deceive you when you're roasting. Yeah. Because even when you had it, like, you're like, this looks a little bit darker. It's not... There's no oils, though. It is dark. But it looks darker. And I'm I'm not an expert. I'm, I'm, I've only done a couple decafs. So I'm just saying, in my experience with them, um, it's different. I can't apply what I've learned with washed coffees. That'd be a... A great question for Scott Rayo. That's what I really do want to ask him. What considerations? Where do you start? With we need decaf? to get. And what are, when are you guys out there listening? You have questions for Scott? Hit me up. Jacob at orangecactuscoffee.com. Jacob yeah. at orangecactuscoffee.com. Sorry. We got a couple in the queue. Let's get a like, few more. So I think we, we have like two or two three. Two or three. Two We'd or like three in the like queue. Six, We'd like maybe. to have six for him to pick from. Yes. Let's get them back on. So 
So there you go. So we're looking get, at a get decaf me some and a natty. More. Natty's different too, but uh, I haven't found it quite as challenging from wash from roasting its washed counter- counterpart. Man, it's <laughs> just my my lips are wow, so good. Yeah, because we so had the opportunity. Let's do that savory. <laughs> <laughs> the saviness is all up in there. That creaminess oh. just gets in the nasal. Yeah, I'm just you know, you don't. Uh huh. Yes. Like that. <clears throat> just like that. Just like that. It happens just like that. So that's what's going on there. Um, so next, we had a coffee experience. We did. What yeah. was our coffee experience? We had it just today, and it was because of you. I was tr- oh, yeah. I was trying to avoid it. It was so bad. But you just saw it, and you're like, I gotta have it. So yeah. So Mike and I, we, of course, you 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 guys know we work for a bank. What? Uh, Full time financial institution. A financial institution. Get it right. And we had to do some mandatory compliance training today. While we were sitting in that training, there was some coffee in the back of the room. And so, of course, I asked, could we have a little bit of coffee? And I poured myself, Mike, and another gentleman sitting with us. What up, Brian? A half a cup of coffee. And it it looked and smelled so bad that I just put cream and sugar in it for everybody. I didn't even ask. I did not even ask. I, I partly wanted to try it, but I, it I'm It smelled glad so did. bad. Yeah. I was like, I'm just going to put cream and sugar. I don't care what you like. This is the only way that you're going to get any of this down. Mike took like two sips and that was it. He didn't, he didn't finish it. He had didn't no desire. The no cup. desire. I don't. I drank it just because I was bored. <laughs> just keep it. This, this is gross. Taking this a is, sip. This try. is disgusting. It reminds me of the Geico commercial with the, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. with the raccoons. The raccoons like, oh, in oh, the this trash. is disgusting. You got to try, try this. Try oh. this. Why would I try it if it's disgusting? Oh, this is, oh, this is terrible. You got to try it. Yeah, just put it in your mouth. Just try it. Yeah. So that's what it was like. It was Pike Place and it was in the box. Yeah, it was it was horrible. It was really. Terrible. I was really hoping it was the blonde. The blonde. That's what I say. Can we go to Starbucks and record you ordering a blonde grande? <laughs> Could I get a grande blonde, please? Um, the blonde and the if, grande. If you're getting a grande blonde, why can't you get a grande pike place a as well? A they'd probably know what you're saying. Yeah, you probably earned some a, some a, points. A yurga chefe. Could I try the yurga chefe? A half a chefe. <laughs> you heard good, ha, ha, ha? Yeah, all the consonants are silent in that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. Can I try the <laughs> uh, yes, you yeah, the blue one. The one with Do the blue grande? No, I'd like a large. <laughs> Don't large start. is grande. <laughs> mm, so anyway. No, a large is venti. What's funny about the venti that? Venti is twenty. Yeah, it's twenty. So can I get a large? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. There's a clip from a movie, right? That yeah, I shared with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I was floating around the interwebs. Yeah, it's funny. Being dumb and makes languages. makes fun of Starbucks is yeah. uh, offering. So, so, yeah, because a tall's not tall, and a grande is not large. <laughs> He's like, actually, a tall means large. Grande um, means large. Means large. And Vente is the only one that doesn't mean large. <laughs> uh, so good. Anyways, it was nasty. It wasn't very good. I was disappointed because I. I even though right, I try to not just say you're a coffee snob. Ooh, Starbucks. No, no, thank you. I don't like Starbucks. I like real coffee. Yeah, I, I do. I that. try not to. I know you do. I do that all the time. You're stuck up. You're a snob. Yeah. I try to be like, well, maybe I'm a coffee connoisseur. Maybe not a I coffee snob. Just oh, okay, connoisseur. A connoisseur of coffee. Gotcha. Maybe it will be better. Maybe I just didn't like it in the past. Maybe who knows? Um, and so in this case, it's a box, which my wife and I were just looking at buying for some function that she was planning. Um, so we Really? Did, what kind of function was she planning? What's going on? Oh, for the school. Oh, okay. They're doing something for the school. Oh, okay. Parent-teacher uh, appreciation. I see. So they're looking for an easy way to have a lot of coffee. Yeah. Um, and either store-bought or you do the AirPods, you know. We have the AirPods still. We have AirPods. I know. It, we almost did that. You almost borrowed my AirPods? I almost did. Oh. But it was too much work. <laughs> It is a lot of work. It was too much. We're like just. It is a lot of work. They ended up going with like um, uh, iced coffee. Anyway, the boxes I think were right around seventeen dollars. Yeah, for forty ounces. Yeah, and they give you cups. Yeah, and the little packets of sugar. Yeah, they give you a whole little setup. They got side put in there for creamer, powdered creamer. No, no, no. They have half and half. Half and half. Yeah, they give you a little half and half. They give you a little cup of half and half. Why didn't you like it? What was wrong with gross. It? What was gross about it? It was gross. It tastes like burnt coffee. It did taste burnt. It tastes burnt. It, it had that stale yeah, coffee flavor. Yeah, it tasted stale too. and burnt. Yeah. And I, you know, I used to drink Pike Place every day. 
Erday. Erday. Pike Place Erday. What they say about palates, right, is palates, what you like is mostly dictated by what you grew up, what you're familiar with, mm-hmm. your environment, what you drink day in and day out, you actually grow accustomed to. Yeah. And so sometimes when you taste something that's better... Um, it takes you a little while to come It takes to you it. a while to recalibrate your palate. Yeah, and I some, can see that. And that's why somebody said, I guarantee you, even if you say you like you know, Starbucks or whatever, and you don't want to change, that's fine. You have don't whatever change. you want. You do you. But if you have every day Starbucks and you know a, a select specialty offering, over time you will, they say for the most part, come to like the better coffee. Yeah. Because your palate slowly gets retrained. Yes. And you slowly realize what you've been drinking is garbage. It's not very good. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't any good, unfortunately. Yeah. Which is sad because to me, the instructor that brought it thought, oh, I'm going to get everyone Starbucks, right? Yeah. This is a treat. Yeah, because they've done around. such a good job with branding. Yeah. Such a good job of branding. Yep. But you know, we know, now, there's no better coffee by us that you can buy a box of. That's what's missing. I could walk in with an air pot, swinging it. <laughs> Press got some sweet boxes now. Yeah. Down in Phoenix. Yep. Press is always doing cool stuff. Anyway. So that's it. That was our coffee experience. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, Jenk, for pouring me a half a cup. Yep. And You're welcome. Making me drink it. You're welcome. You didn't drink all of it. No, I couldn't. Mm-mm. No. Went back to the gum. Gum yep. was better. Yep. It's better to just make your coffee at home where you can grind it fresh and brew it fresh. But some of you, when you're grinding coffee, you have some challenges, and that challenge is static. That uh, static electricity or whatever, just static, you, you get the, as soon as the you grind your coffee, yeah. it starts sticking to the side of your, your jar that you ground into. You've got little pieces of uh, chaff flying around that you'd rather not, and you just wish it would kind of stay in one place uh, so that you could brew it a little easier. You just want to get it all out. Yeah. You don't want it stuck to the burr. You don't want to, next time you go to use it, you bang on it and you get a couple grams dropping out because the go. static is gone now. So, so how, do, whoop, how do you Tim, avoid that? Tim, no, not, it was Jim Seven recommended yeah. taking a spoon and dipping it in a little water and yep. then giving the coffee a little stir. Yeah. But there's another take on that similar method. What is that? Well, he even paid homage or alluded homage, to it. Alluded. Um, the Ross droplet method is kind of, I think, who originated, or at least who I found was credited with coming up with it. Mm-hmm. Just adding a drop of water or two, depending on how much you're doing, to the beans. And who's Ross? I don't know. Oh, I perfect. Looked, Manny? I, who's Ross? I haven't looked into it. I don't oh. know who Ross is. He's probably a legend. And um, He needs to be added to the coffee he, legend he list. He might need to be added yeah. to the list. So you've been using that little tiny spray bottle. Yeah, so what I... Someone took it a step further, so Craddock coffee he has an instagram uh, i should check them out got many followers they kind of dive into the science and they test everything to death everything coffee and they modified i believe it was an ek grinder to have um little misters so as they're grinding they had a little pump and they would just mist a fine little spray that's crazy over the beans and that got me thinking it's did like it cool them what as well not only did it, not only, I mean. Yeah, maybe it, cool it, the, the burrs down. Yeah. I, I, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. They didn't really specify. But what they were testing, their biggest thing is retention, grinder retention. So you weigh out 20 grams, throw it in the grinder, and you're good. Now you, you go do your pour over. But maybe your grinder's retaining a gram. We so want 20 out. We want 20 out. Yeah. You want to be consistent. And they the found, Lido does a great job of that. The Lido the does very well. Yeah. That's probably the best grinder I've seen. Like yeah. where. Nothing stays. The ones that do better just by design are the ones that don't have shoots where the burrs are right above. Uh, Because some, like, uh, they have the coffee comes out the bottom of the burr and then it has to slide down a chute into the catcher. And sometimes you'll see more retention in that design. But that got me thinking when I saw Socratic's post. It's like, well, maybe I can just come up with a little spray bottle or something. And And so, yeah, I use a little cologne bottle. Um... Anything works, you, you know. Spray it with like cinnamon flavor, or what do you do? Yeah, then? yeah. No, I just I left the cologne that came with the bottle in oh, it. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's wonderful. There you go. Yeah, and do you uh, get a sweet or savory uh, <laughs> flavor profile? Uh, you know, it's a little bit of both. You know, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, it is. It stings the eyes a little bit, so you got to get over that. But no, I just uh, put a little water in there. Two sprays, uh, three sprays, depending on how much coffee you're doing, and you get almost zero retention. Somebody was worried about, um, 
had made a comment that do you, does this cause your burrs to uh, do you get rust over time? Do you get? Yeah. And I haven't noticed anything. In fact, it's such a small amount of water that I don't think it even uh, gets maintained or retains on the on the burrs themselves. Mm-hmm. If you have ceramic burrs, then of course there's no concern there. So yeah. give it a try, though. You will find that you're going to get more grams out. Um, or, or closer to what you measured out, and you're going to have a lot less static, and, and it just works really well. So I love it. It's a good little tip. I love it. Speaking of tips, how does heat affect espresso extraction? Yeah, like, no idea. Oh, well, there was a video but on the show. somebody else does. Oh, <laughs> nice. Isn't it Frank shared this with us? Yeah, I wanted to share a resource that Frank sent our way. Oh. I watched about half of it. It's a, it's a rather long video, and the gentleman that does these videos has a lot of resources just about how espresso machines work. Oh, okay. And okay. he gets into, in this particular video, we'll put it in the show notes. You will. Yes, I will. Thank, Thank you, you, buddy. Mm-hmm. You're very I'll welcome. I'll add it to the uh, YouTube video description down below. Mm. Um, that the difference between a, a dual boiler and... A single boiler? No, it says right there, a dual boiler. Oh, and a heat exchanger? And a heat exchanger. Mm. And he basically talks about how you want optimal ten- temperature at the group head, not just in the reservoir, but when it gets to the puck... And some do that more efficiently mm-hmm. and how that affects your, your profile. Nice. So if you're into that or if you're shopping around or you want to just learn what makes some espresso machines better or just different, um, then check out this video. Check out this guy's channel. Um, maybe to be a little bit more thorough, I'll tell you what his name is. <laughs> that, would, that would be nice. That would be exciting. Go check this guy out. He's on YouTube somewhere. That's all right. Dan, uh, what would you say? K-E-H-N. Ken? Keen? Yeah. Something Keen? like that. Dan Keen. That's what I would say. Yeah. Keen. Dan Keen. But he's, he's from. got, uh, yeah, he's got, it's kind of neat. He takes someone that he's introducing new to coffee and walks him through it. So the guy asks questions and some of the questions are what I was thinking because he's, he's new to it as well. So this video is newbie induction, induction, introduction to espresso. Is it misspelled? No, it was misspoken. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's surprising. Yeah, when you're new, you'll you'll be inducted into this coffee world. Welcome. Yep. We throw hot coffee on you. Blood in, blood a, out. As a form of hazing. Jumped in, jumped out. Uh, so there you go. Yeah. There you go. That sounds great. Speaking of blood in and blood out, Manny G, um, he says, you, he should we do a Manny G recommends for this? Is it this from Manny? Oh, no, that was from Ghost, the roast. Oh, from Ghost. Yeah, that was from Ghost. From Ghost. He wants to justify um, doing zero dishes, right? Yeah. Is that what this yeah. is? The yep. surprising reason why you should never wash your coffee cup? What was it, Mike? What was the reason? So, yeah, I watched uh, the video. How long is the video? It's not very long. Where do you find time to watch all these videos? Well, somebody's got to do a little bit of the, uh, the a little research. A little bit of research? Oh, okay. All right. Fair I put them on in the background. Oh, I do my work. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Well, what's that going on? What's oh, going on there? Hey, why is Ghost not uh, washing his dishes? Oh, so they see. say. Why um, is he not washing his pizza pan out? Yeah, so I thought it was just funny. It was interesting that I could relate to. Um, not washing your coffee mug. They yeah. say why it actually might be better. And to summarize, you can check out the video. There's more facts and information out there. If you work in an office setting, which many of you do, or maybe just a setting where other individuals are also washing dishes and you share a sink and at that sink you share maybe a sponge um that sponge is going to contain far more germs than your unwashed coffee mug yeah that sponge is nasty like a work sponge a community sponge exactly yep if you keep that mug at your desk um chances are the only germs on it are yours now, I know you said if you keep that mug at your desk, but in my mind, I heard if you keep that sponge at your desk. Well, you can bring your own sponge. Bring your own sponge. There you go. They say, you know, compared, you know, to keeping the mug at your desk, compare that to if you go wash in the sink, use the communal sponge, put it in the communal drying rack, you're probably introducing more germs, but you're thinking, hey, I got a nice clean cup, um, and you'd be better off leaving it. Now, they also mentioned something else in the video that I'm probably going to butcher, yeah. but to some effect... I think they said in the Navy, it's seen as like throughout your whole service, there was um, certain individuals in certain ranks would not wash like until you got out or hmm. they said that you it'd be common to go into, you know, the office of one of these um, individuals and you would see a dirty mug that they haven't washed since they started. Huh. I don't know if that sounds familiar to you at all. No. I wasn't in the Navy. 
I'm just saying in general, if you've heard about it, Mm-mm. read about it, um, watch the video for more details. But they said, yeah, that, you know, that's obviously not hygiene driven. It's more out of. Yeah. It's like a. Customs. Everything. Because yeah. they said yeah. that. And they quoted some other soldiers that say, you know, it's the one thing. A soldier and or a sailor? Soldiers. Okay. Then coffee in general is the one reminder of home. Yeah. And so not washing your mug was like having an element with you that reminded you of, of home. Huh. Reminded you. I see. And so they wouldn't wash it. Cool. That's they just very use it over and over. I, I was just thinking about the survival tactics that I used working in a communal office setting. What'd you do? And I just, I would always, I always kept my mug with me. Like the communal drying rack? Uh-uh. That ain't happening. Yeah. That ain't happening. Like I'll take as soon as I'm done drinking, I'll take it to the sink, I'll wash it, or I'll just rinse it, and then I use paper towels yeah. to dry. That's what I would do. And then that could, that puppy comes right back with me and goes right back into my cooler, or you know, it's, it wherever, goes into my backpack or wherever or, I'm at. It's, yeah. It stays with me. Nobody. It doesn't it doesn't sit at a communal drying rack, and for sure, for sure, it ain't using no communal sponge. I like the that. Ain't sponge. happening. Come on now, it's that ain't of- happening. Like if it's like if it dries, if I let it dry, I'll normally take like a little droplet of, um, was it dish dishwashing detergent, yeah, you know, or, or, or the soap that's yeah. sitting there. Yeah. But if it's you know if it's not dried and crusty, it's just a rinse. It's just a rinse, and it's coming back. Yeah, exactly. Throw a little hot water in there. Sometimes I do that now at home, like throughout the same day, when I preheat for the next brew, I yeah. use that hot water, clean it up. Yeah. Psh, there you go. Good to go for the next. Good to go for the next one. So, yeah, yeah that's interesting. interesting. How do you keep your mug clean? Yeah. What, do you what, do? what about office etiquette, like in general? What do you mean? Well, like, like okay, here's the thing. Um, do, do, you, yes. do you talk yes. to, in, in the men's room? Like, if you go into the restroom, <laughs> like the family, you know, there's always a, a, there's a guy, like, like, I mean, I'm not a chit chat. I'm a talker. I am a talker. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little I bit. I can go with you there, but not at the stall. You mean when you... Not at the urinal. Once you're engaged. Yes. Once we've begun. Once I'm in there. Yeah. Once I'm doing the business. Yeah. I don't want to tell you how my kids and wife are doing. Yeah. And I don't... I certainly don't want to talk about work. Yeah. Like I'm... Chat it up. Yeah. I'm not interested in chit I always thought there you. was kind of an unwritten etiquette um, that would agree with you. Yeah. That, that you, you handle your business. There, You can talk up until engagement, until it's time, and then you... Yeah, like then you stare at the wall. Well, you can talk at like the sink area. Oh yeah, you can talk in the sink area. Sink area is cool. But once you cross that boundary, and normally there's like a little half wall yeah. or something, or a little enclave or something. <laughs> there's a boundary. There's gotta, a line of departure. You gotta zip it up. There's a line of departure. And I'm talking you about the mouse. You cross it. Yeah. You're done. You, that's it. You shall remain quiet from this point forward. From this point forward <laughs> until you cross this line back. Okay, now. Now you're washing your hands. Now we can chit-chat again. We're back at the sink. Right. Chit-chat's allowed. Chit-chat's allowed. Do you look at them directly or do you look at them in the mirror? Uh, in the mirror. So you, you gaze through the mirror. You yeah. look up at an angle in the at mirror. At an angle. You make eye contact yeah. in the mirror. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. You don't Absolutely. look over. No. No. No, 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 no. No, you don't do that. You're not looking night. over. You're no. not looking over? You're not looking over. Not at not at the stall. Not at the urinal. Not not washing hands. Do you have to look at all, or could you just like do your thing and just? It's okay. I think it's acceptable to just finish washing the hands. Yeah, for the conversation. Yeah, you, but under no no absolutely no circumstances are you inside the stall with the door closed and locked, yelling at people, yelling at people. <laughs> Uh, hey, where are we going to lunch? Who is that down there? Who is that in there? <laughs> Check the shoes. Oh, that's Mike. Hey, Mike. No. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Uh, there you are. Hey, buddy. I've been looking for you. Yeah. Got a question. Remember those reports you sent over? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro. No. And the other thing that I see sometimes is the eating. Wait. What? Yeah. Eating what? So like a banana or a piece of fruit or something. Like in the in the restroom. Okay, so we're you know you come you spend in a lot of time in there, don't you? you yes, I do. You, well, not much anymore, but I mean, not not the communal <laughs> restroom. Okay. Now I use my own throne. Oh, room. thank you, thank you for clarifying. But um, like you know the, the like you walk in and the sink area, like if you have something in your hands, you can set it down over there. 
Yeah. But if I try to avoid bringing anything in. It, it, okay. Rule so, number one. Rule number one, don't bring anything in. But. Hands-free. This is yeah. a hands, hands-free yeah. zone. Yeah. Unless it's a backpack. Unless it's a backpack and then everything's fine. And I don't mind being in the stall, you know, zipping and unzipping the backpack and doing what I need to do. What I'm doing in here is Just none of your business. Backpack on. It's none of your business what's going on in here. But. Okay. I'm with you. So some folks, they come in and once they cross that line of departure, it's like the mouth is something to hold on to something with. Mm. Like, you know, like, oh, I'm eating a banana. I'll just set and <laughs> chomp like, Arr. or like a uh, piece of fruit yeah, or okay. something. Just hold it in the mouth. Just hold it in the mouth. Yeah. While you do, you, you yeah. do your do. Or, and then some of them even once, you know, once the process has begun. Once engagement is once, underway. Once they're engaged, <laughs> then, you know, you'll see one hand come up. Out of the corner of your <laughs> eye and assist in the eating. You know, because like you I'm start gonna, drooling. Like, I, yeah. You, you got to get rid of yeah, that. I gotta, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish eating. Salivate all over the place. I'm, I'm killing two birds with one stone while I'm standing here engaging the enemy. Do you think that's a individual that's um, trying to say how busy he is? Like, look at me. I'm so busy I don't have time to eat and pee. I got to do it I, all at once. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a work problem. It's and then he your talks people to you are, why he's eating. Your people are overtasked. Hey, what's up? What's up, yeah. bro? Now, just getting this then, apple in before like, the next meeting. I understand, like, one hand comes up because, I mean, I understand, maybe you only need one hand. You know, you can, I, I've accomplished the enemy engagement with one hand before. But what do you do when the second hand comes up? <laughs> like, you know, it wasn't a zero handed operation. And all of a sudden, like, well. Like there's two hands going, like assisting with the eating. Okay, you're you're going into some real dangerous territory here because that the individual that shows the two hands usually is also the individual that reaches over and grabs your shoulder, right? And says, "You know what I'm saying, buddy? You know, <laughs> oh, they, the toucher, they no, grab you. No, I'm thinking of He's got specific, the apple in his mouth, the other I, hand I'm, on your shoulder. I'm thinking of a specific incident where there was not. Uh, oh, he ain't any peeing. contact. He ain't peeing. He's in there just to be with uh, you. Oh, just to say hi. Yeah, just, just to hang yeah, out. Yeah, what's up? Just to be like, I'm so busy you ever heard that? that I'm eating. You're like, oh, did you have to go? I'm leaving. No, I just came in to talk. Well, oh. what about the guy that is <laughs> like, we cross, right? We cross at the sink area. And then, oh, I wanted to talk to you about those TPS reports or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. What was the, I don't remember, an office space, the reports that they kept Something talking like about. That. Yeah. And so then, like, oh, Hi. Now I see you, my attention, I'm going to stay and linger. Yeah. I'm going to hang out a little while in, longer. In this little common entrance area. In this common entrance area and project my voice across yeah. the line of departure while you're trying to engage over there. Yeah, that's a no-no too. And then waiting for you. The acoustics in the bathrooms If I'm going to wait either. for you, I'm going to wait outside. Yeah. I think that's the most appropriate thing. I think so. Yeah. Let's chat when you get out. You finish up here. I'll leave you be. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You finish. I'm yeah. going to let you go. Yeah. I'm going to leave you to finish this. The, yeah, exactly. There is, I think, common etiquette. At least I would consider it common. And then Brian from the stall <laughs> hollers out and says, oh, yeah, hey, I need that too. Oh, oh that's that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Where, how did we get here? Oh, yeah. No washing idea. your mug at work. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> washing your mug. It's um, also along the same take lines. Take it with you. When you Keep maybe, the mug with you. You go to, into the restroom. Yeah, keep yeah. the mug with you. Keep the mug with you. And they don't talk the to you from the stall, yeah. but you hear they're watching videos on their phone in the stall. Yeah. That's awkward, too. I think everyone might know on some level that a lot of people yeah, use but, the phone. But then to break the fourth wall, right? It's like... Oh, but then okay. you're like, I can hear he's watching, you know, these these uh, fail videos of people hurting themselves. Yeah. And I can hear it. I know he's holding his phone. Um, I don't know. That's probably not just good. yeah. You, yeah. you just got to keep it so, so good. Keep it professional. Keep, <laughs> keep it pro, <laughs> just like this show. <laughs> keep it professional. Just like us here. Um, keep your mug with you. Keep if your mug with you. Uh, don't, don't don't leave it unattended. Don't leave it in the bathroom. Don't, don't bring it in the bathroom. Don't leave it in the communal. Well, if you can walk into the bathroom to the sink area, wash it and leave. What other sink are you going to use? Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of times office space has. Oh, if you have a kitchen sink, yeah. well, obviously use the kitchen sink. But if you can't, that should go I'm without with saying. I'm with you. But if all you have is one bathroom sink, yeah. then I just consider the bathroom just like covered, everything in there. You yeah, know, don't touch it. That's that's reasonable. What okay. about the paper towel that comes out? Is that okay? I think that's your best bet. Yeah, that's all you got. 
Speaking so of I, all we got, that's all I got. Um, oh, good. How did you like the espresso? Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. It was a little more intense than the um, Guatemalan, right? Because you yeah. said that was the Colombian. It's the Hondo. It's the Hondo? I thought you said you just started brewing. Hondo. This was more intense than it, it's been. Is it a little older? Has it rested a little bit? Maybe. Maybe. It was very sweet, though. Yeah. I, I'm rocking a three to one ratio. Okay. It was good. I really enjoyed it. So. I'm going to go for some more. All right. Well, let's go get some more. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's our new sign off. Well, it looks like we're about out of coffee, so we better go get some more. Until next time. We better go get some more indeed. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. If you have questions for Scott Rail, please send me an email, jacobandorangecactuscoffee.com. If you've got tips for how you keep your mug clean at work, I'd love to hear about it in the show notes, orangecactuscoffee.com forward slash episode 118. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time.